So we turn today to Zechariah 11, verses 7 to 14. So I fed the flock for slaughter, in particular the poor of the flock. I took for myself two staffs, the one called Beauty, and the other I called Bonds, and I fed the flock. I dismissed the three shepherds in one month. My soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. Then I said, I will not feed you. Let what is dying die, and what is perishing perish. Let those that are left eat each other's flesh. And I took my staff, Beauty, and cut it in two, that I might break the covenant which I had made with all the peoples. So it was broken on that day. Thus the poor of the flock who were watching me knew that it was the word of the Lord. Then I said to them, If it is agreeable to you, give me my wages, and if not, refrain. So they weighed out for my wages thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said to me, Throw it to the potter, that princely price they set on me. So I took the thirty pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord for the potter. Then I cut into my other staff bonds, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. So there are a number of bits here that are kind of hard to understand. You can go back and look and see what the scholars say, and they will come up with dozens, literally scores, of different solutions on this one, 40 or 50 different solutions. Who are the three shepherds that were dismissed or cut off? We're left with a situation here where it's very difficult to interpret this. What we do know is that the people in Zechariah's day would have understood it pretty well, and even though we can't understand the maybe the details of it here, we can we can zoom out and get the larger picture. The larger picture is that uh, there's true shepherds and false shepherds, and the false shepherds are going to let the flock go and slaughter each other. Yeah, it's a pretty rough deal. You've got people who are in leadership, but they're not really leading. They're just kind of facilitating trouble. And so that's one of the things we seem to be seeing here. A true leader isn't going to allow this kind of mayhem to continue, but this is the picture here. You've got to be careful you're not following any false shepherds. So a command comes, let those that are left eat each other's flesh. This is this uh, predatory leadership, just just for me. You know, I'm the leader, you guys slaughter yourselves, I'll just kind of sit back and watch, let me get the chips. You know, it's interesting when we look out into the governments in the world here in the 2020s, wonder if there's any great joy and strong desire for good things for the people, or if, if a lot of our leaders maybe are kind of in their own little clique and don't really care. But you know what? If it's not God's kingdom, if it's a human kingdom, I guess, would we be surprised if the leaders were sort of disinterested or even malevolent? So we also heard here about the prophecy of the 30 pieces of silver. And we know, of course, if we go to the New Testament, we'll find that Jesus is betrayed by Judas, one of the 12 apostles, for 30 pieces of silver. And in fact, what? Uh, out of the 12 apostles, wouldn't those be shepherds? Jesus chose elders and the apostles. Those would be ones who were sent to deliver the gospel. And Judas horned himself in, but he was numbered among the twelve. And so, yeah, Judas is sort of a false apostle in the end, isn't he? As he betrays his Lord. So not really a surprise, but interesting here how this picture is put into the scriptures here hundreds of years before Jesus. And Jesus is going to, of course, pick this up and it'll be spoken of in the Gospels. A false shepherd, of course, will betray. A false shepherd will betray every time because they're false. They, this is what a, a false shepherd does is betray, so to speak, category. We want to be true shepherds, be following the chief shepherd, Jesus, in all things. So sometimes there's a revolution from within, you know, everything looks the same, the systems seem to be the same, all the pieces seem to be there, you know, maybe you've still got your constitution, the different branches of government and all that, and yet there's kind of already been a revolution from within, and the things that are happening are not true to the original principles of the church or of the uh, of the the nation. And so, again, we find that as Christian believers, what do we need to do? We need to be wise. We need to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. We need to be careful what we put our trust in, because we are not to trust in human governments. We couldn't possibly trust in human governments. Jesus is our Lord. We are kind of monarchists in a sense. The greater kingdom is already here, as long as we are truly following King Jesus above all human rulers. False shepherds, false leaders will falsely lead, and true shepherd will truly lead. If we're true shepherds, we'll be looking for the Word of God, we'll be delivering the Word of God, understanding it somewhat and delivering it to others, trying seeking ultimately to live by it. Because the true shepherd is Jesus, we want to follow always the true shepherd. Don't be too discouraged by the false shepherds. Our Lord is coming. See you tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm.